very good shot, my lord. Thank you, Warren. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm late. Oh, don't bother apologising. I'm sorry you're alive. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I see the target's ready. <clears throat> I'd like to see the Spaniard who could make his way past me. Well, go to Spain. There are millions of them. <laughs> <laughs> I advise them to stay there, then. Keep their hands off our women. Oh, God. Who is she this time? I don't know what you mean. Ah. Oh! <laughs> ah, and who is Jane? I am sworn to secrecy. Torture me, kill me, you shall never know. Oh, Jane Harrington! <laughs> we are very much in love, my lord. This is the Jane Harrington? Yes. Jane, bury me in a Y-shaped coffin, Harrington. <laughs> I think maybe there are two Jane Harringtons. No, tall, blonde, elegant. Aye, that's right. Goes like a privy door when the plague's in town. <laughs> My lord. Come on, get on with your shot. You'll get over her. I did. <laughs> So did Borick, actually. <laughs> yeah. You see, you've got this thing about beards, apparently. Well, in that case, I'm going to shave. <laughs> Bad luck, Baldus. Not to worry, my lord. The arrow didn't, in fact, enter my body. Ah, good. No, by a thousand to one chance, my woolly got in the way. <laughs> Yeah, I'd only just put it there. But now, I will leave it there forever. Quite so, Warwick. It can be your lucky willy. <laughs> yes, my lord. Years from now, I'll show it to my grandchildren. Yes, Warwick. I think the grandchildren may now be out of the question. <laughs> oh. No, no, don't stop, sir. It's coming. It's definitely coming. I... Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I just wonder whether two socks and a hand grenade is really the sort of thing the covers of King and Country are made of. They will be when I've painted them being shoved up the Kaiser's backside. <laughs> ah, now, now, this is interesting. What is? Well, Private Baldrick is obviously a bit of an impressionist. The only decent impression he can do is of a man with no talent. <laughs> What's it called, Baldrick? The Vomiting Cavalier? <laughs> no, sir, that's not supposed to be vomit. It's dabs of light. No, it's vomit. <laughs> so, uh, why did you choose that? You told me to, sir. Did I? Yeah, you told me to paint whatever comes from within. So I did my breakfast. <laughs> Look, there's a little tomato. Goodness. If only I'd paid attention in nursery art class instead of spending my entire time manufacturing papier-mâché willies to frighten Sarah Wallace. <laughs> I would never have believed that my stag party would be like this. <laughs> the most depressing night of my life. Well, my lord, at least you can take solace from one thing. What's that? You'd be pretty sure your wife's a virgin. <laughs> at least there are no living witnesses to the contrary. <laughs> if she wasn't, we might still stand a chance. Officially, you've still got to be a virgin. Right. What, my lord? <laughs> oh! Oh, no. No. No! Yes! 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 <laughs> Please, my lord, I beg you to reconsider. Baldwick, if there was any other way, you know I'd take it. But I'll die in there. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll give you a hero's funeral. Bury you at sea. Say you died in combat with an enemy vessel. Right. There we are. Go on, and you go. Little boy with big job to do. <laughs> go on, Percy. Get the king. Infanta. Edmundo, 
Edmundo, amor mío. Oh, Edmund, my love. <laughs> These paintings could spell my way out of the trenches. Yours? That's right, ours. <laughs> All we have to do is paint something heroic to appeal to the simple-minded Tommy. Over to you, Baldrick. <laughs> um, how about a noble Tommy standing with a look of horror and disgust over the body of a murdered nun <laughs> who's been brutally done over by a nasty old German? <laughs> Excellent. I, I, I can see it now. The nun and the hun. <laughs> To lose. George, a set up your easel. Waldrick and I will pose. This is going to be art's greatest moment since Mona Lisa sat down and told Leonardo da Vinci she was in a slightly odd mood. <laughs> Waldrick, you lie down in the mud and be the nun. I'm not lying down there, it's all wet. Well, let's put it this way either you lie down and get wet or you're knocked down and get a broken nose. <laughs> Actually, it's not that wet, is it? No. <laughs> Who are you going to be then, sir? The noble Tommy? Precisely. Standing over the body of the ravaged nun. I want a wimple. Well, you should have gone before we started the picture. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, my father was a nun. <laughs> no, he wasn't. He was so, sir. I know, cos whenever he was up in court and the judge used to say occupation, he'd say nun. <laughs> Really, this must be one of the most difficult parts of the job. Yes. And for the witch as well. Of course! My lord, I have a cunning plan. Help! <coughs> oh, Baldrick! <laughs> I think I might be able to stall him. Well, Grumble, don't your time has come. You wish to come to that? No. Very well. Oh, sorry. Sorry, yes. Yes, I do, in fact. Uh, I should like to confess in front of God and this rather small crowd that I have occasionally done things wrong. Be more specific. Uh, um, well, I have erred and strayed like a lost ox. Sheep! Uh, a sheep. I have accoveted my father's adultery. Get on with it! I, I have uh, not not honoured my neighbour's ass. Oh, no, the fires! I'm a witch! I'm a witch! I do, I do! <laughs> oh, damn! I'm not even comfortable. <laughs> I feel as if I am on fire! Uh, I know, I'm rather regretting my choice of undergarments as well. <laughs> I'm burning! I'm burning! I'm burning! Oh, yes, but I think you're jolly glad of that cloak in the winter. Good. Yes, that was a close shave. <laughs> Thank you, Baldrick. General Melton will be here at any moment. When he arrives, leave the talking to me, all right? I like to keep an informal trench, as you know, but today you must only speak with my express permission. Is that clear? Is that clear? <laughs> permission to speak. Yes, yes sir. Uh, absolutely. Uh, yes. <laughs> Excellent. At ease. Now then, Blackadder, where would you like me to sit? I thought just a simple trim of the moustache today, nothing drastic. <laughs> no, sir. We hear about the paintings, sir. Oh, yes, of course. Good Lord, George! <laughs> how are you, my boy? <laughs> I said, how are you? Permission to speak. 
Oh, absolutely top holes are with a yin and a yang and a yippity doo. <laughs> Splendid! Um, your Uncle Betty sends his regards. I told them you could have a week off in April. Don't want you missing the boat race, do we? Permission to speak? Oh, certainly not. <laughs> Permission to sing boisterously, sir. If you must. <laughs> row, 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 you punch gently, gently down, down the stream. <laughs> Belts off, trousers down, ears and life a scream. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. University education. You can't beat it. Can you? Bravo. Now, what have we here? Name? Permission to speak? Baldrake, sir. Oh, tally ho, yibbity dap and zing zang spillet. Looking forward to bullying off for the final chucker? Permission to speak? <laughs> answer the general, Baldrick. I can't answer him, sir. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Uh, are you looking forward to the big push? No, sir, I'm absolutely terrified. <laughs> the healthy humour of the honest Tommy. <laughs> Don't worry, my boy. If you should falter, remember that Captain Darling and I are behind you. About 35 miles behind you. <laughs> Baldrick, what have you done? I've done C and D. Right, let's have it then. Right. Big blue wobbly thing that mermaids live in. <laughs> See. <laughs> yes. Tiny misunderstanding still. <laughs> My hopes weren't high. Oh, and what about D? I'm quite pleased with dog. Yes, and your definition of dog is? Not a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Your Highness, may I have a word? Certainly. As you know, sir, it has always been my intention to stay with you until you had a strapping son and I one likewise to take over the burdens of my duties. That's right, Black Arrow, and I thank you for it. But I'm afraid, sir, that there's been a change of plan. <laughs> I'm off to the kitchen to hack my head off with a big knife. <laughs> oh, come on, Black Adder. It's only a book. Let's just damn the fellow's eyes, strip the britches from his backside and warm his heels to Putney Bridge. Hurrah! Sir, these are not the days of Alfred the Great. You can't just lop someone's head off and blame it on the Vikings. Can't I, my God? No. Oh, well, all right, then. Well, let's just get on with it. I mean, boil my brains. It's only a dictionary. No one's asked us to eat ten raw pigs for breakfast. Good Lord, I mean, we're British, aren't we? You're not. You're German. <laughs> get me some coffee, boy. If I fall asleep before Monday, we're doomed. Mr. Blackadder, mm. time to wake up. What time is it? Monday morning. Monday morning? Oh, my God, I've overslept. Where's the quill? Where's the parchment? I don't know. Maybe Dr. Johnson's got some with him. What? He's outside. Ow! Oh! Are you ill, sir? No, you can't have it. I know I said Monday, but I want Baldrick to read it, which, unfortunately, will mean teaching him to read. <laughs> Which will take about ten years, but time well spent, I think, because it's such a very good dictionary. I don't think so. Oh, God, we've been burgled! <laughs> what? I think it's an awful dictionary, full of feeble definitions and ridiculous verbiage. I've come to ask you to chuck that damn thing in the fire. Are you sure? I've never been more sure of anything in my life, sir. I love you, Dr. Johnson, and I want to have your babies. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me, Dr. Johnson, but my Auntie Marjorie's just ar arrived. Baldrick, who gave you permission to turn into an Alsatian? <laughs> oh, God, it's a dream, isn't it? It's a bloody dream. <laughs> Dr. Johnson doesn't want us to burn his dictionary at all. Don't worry, old man, I have a last and I think you'll find decisive witness. Call Private Baldrick. <laughs> Deny everything, Baldrick. <laughs> Are you Private Baldrick? No! <laughs> oh, um, but you are Captain Blackadder's Batman. No! <laughs> Come on, Baldrick, be a bit more helpful. It's me. No, it isn't. <laughs> Sir, I must protest. Quite right. We don't need your kind here, Private. Get out. Is that the door? Oh, don't worry, it's just the actors. My Uncle Baldrick was in a play once. 
My name? Yeah, it was called Macbeth. And what did he play? Second cob piece. <laughs> Macbeth wore him in the fight scenes. So he was a stunt cod piece. <laughs> Did he have a large part? <laughs> Depends who's playing Macbeth. Now, incidentally, Baldrick, actors are very superstitious. On no account mention the word Macbeth this evening, all right? Why not? It brings them bad luck and it makes them very unhappy. Oh, so you won't be mentioning it either? No. Well, not very often. <laughs> right, Bob. The second half starts with Corporal Smith and Johnson as the three silly twerps. All right, sir. The big joke being there's only two of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. That always cracks me up, sir. Followed by Baldrick's impersonation of Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> Bob, take a telegram. Yes, sir. Mr. C. Chaplin, Senate Studios, Hollywood, California. Congrats, stop. Have discovered only person in the world less funny than you. <laughs> Name, Baldrick, stop. Laws, E. Blackadder, stop. Oh, and put a P.S. Please, 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 stop. <laughs> and then after that, we have, ladies and gentlemen, the highlight of our show. Da da! <laughs> feel fantastic. <laughs> Gorgeous Georgina, the traditional soldier's drag act. <laughs> you look absolutely lovely, sir. Rorick, you are either lying, blind or mad. <laughs> Lieutenant looks like all soldiers look on these occasions, about as feminine as W.G. Grace. <laughs> what are you going to give him, George? Well, I thought uh, one or two cheeky gags. <laughs> um, followed by, she was only the ironmonger's daughter, but she knew a surprising amount about fish as well. <laughs> Inspired. Well, at least you made an effort with the dress. What about your costume, Baldrick? I'm in it, sir. <laughs> I see. So your Charlie Chaplin costume consists of that hat. <laughs> yes, sir. Except that in this box, I have a dead slug as a brilliant false moustache. <laughs> yes, only quite brilliant, I fear. How, for instance, are you to attach it to your face? Well, I was hoping to persuade the slug to cling on, sir. <laughs> or if the slug is dead. <laughs> if it failed to cling on to life, I see no reason why it should wish <laughs> to cling on to your upper lip. <laughs> Baldrick, come on. Slugs are always a problem. What you've got to do is screw your face up like this, you see? And then you can clamp it between your top lip and your nose. What? Like this, sir? That's it, that's it, that's me. Right. Uh, <laughs> sir, sir, there's a visitor to see you. Good Lord, Mr Chaplin. <laughs> this is indeed an honour. Why, calls for some sort of celebration. Baldrick, Baldrick! <laughs> <laughs> sir, that is extraordinary, because... This isn't Chaplin at all. This is Baldrick. It is. It's me, sir. <laughs> I know. I know. I was, in fact, being sarcastic. Oh, I see. Hmm. Everything goes above your head, doesn't it, George? <laughs> you should go to Jamaica and become a limbo dancer. <laughs> Yes, in one short evening, I've become the most successful impresario since the manager of the Roman Colosseum thought of putting the Christians and the Lions on the same bill. <laughs> Sir, some people seem to think that I was best. Would you agree? Boric, in the Amazonian rainforests, there are tribes of Indians as yet untouched by civilization who have developed more convincing Charlie Chaplin impressions than yours. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, sir. He's coming off. Oh. What do you think, Bob? One more? God, I love the theatre! <laughs> it's in my blood and in my soul. Baldrick, put those in some water, will you? Yes, sir. Oh! <laughs> well, Baldrick, a good night's work, I think. It's time to divide the loot, and I think it's only fair that we should share it equally. Which I suppose is highwayman's talk for you get the cash, I get the snotty hanky. No, 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 we did this robbery together, so you get half the cash. Oh, thank you, Mr B. This robbery, on the other hand, I'm doing alone. Hand it over, your money or your life. 
<laughs> All fair and above board. Fair enough. As long as I haven't been cheated, I don't mind. Hands up. I am the shadow, but I never miss. Oh, no. You, the one that looks like a pig. He's talking to you, Baldrick. <laughs> Skidaddle! <laughs> so, who have we here? Well, ah, a well-set-up fellow indeed. Sir, a kiss. Sorry, I'm not sure I heard that correctly. <laughs> oh, dear. Maybe your ears need unblocking. Oh, I see a kiss. Oh, of course, of course, of course. And then perhaps a little light supper, some dancing. Who, who knows where it might be? <laughs> Good Lord, it's you! Of course. But your voice, it's... Clever, isn't it? Does your father know you're out? He had to go. You mean he's dead? Yes. Dead as that squirrel. Which squirrel? <laughs> That squirrel. <laughs> of course. You killed him for ruining your chances of marrying Prince George. Oh, I despise the prince. Don't you know it's you I want? I want a real man. A man who can sew on a button. A man who knows where the towels are kept. <laughs> and yes, I crave your fabulous sinewy body. Well, you're only human. <laughs> Here's the plan, brown eyes. You rob the prince of everything he's got, right down to the clothes he's standing in. I'll get my stash and meet you here, and then we'll run away to the West Indies. Well, I don't know. I'll have to think about it. <laughs> I've thought about it. It's a brilliant plan. <laughs> I'll see you here tomorrow. <laughs> right, I'm off. Oh, sir, but what about the danger? Look, the reward's going up day by day. Ha! I laugh in the face of danger. I drop ice cubes down the vest of fear. Things couldn't be better, Baldrick. She'll get me abroad and make me rich. Then I'll probably drop her and get 200 concubines to share my bed. Won't they be rather prickly? <laughs> right, Baldrick. This is an old trick I picked up in the Sudan. We tell HQ that I've gone insane, and I will be invalided back to Blighty before you can say a wibble. <laughs> Poor gormless idiot. Well, I'm a poor gormless idiot, sir, and I've never been invalided back to Blighty. <laughs> yes, Baldrick, but you never said a woman. <laughs> now, ask me some simple questions. Right. What is your name? Wibble. <laughs> what is two plus two? Oh, wibble, wibble. <laughs> Where do you live? London. Hey? A small village on Mars, just outside the capital city. Wibble. <laughs> All the men present and correct, sir. Ready for the off, eh? I'm afraid not, Lieutenant. I'm just off to Hartlepool to buy some exploding trousers. <laughs> Come again, sir. Have you gone barking mad? Yes, George, I have. Cluck, cluck, jibber, jibber, my old man's a mushroom, etc. <laughs> Go send a runner to tell General Melchett that your captain has gone insane and must return to England at once. But, sir, how utterly ghastly for you. I mean, well, you'll miss the whole rest of the war. Yes, very bad luck. Beep. Right. Beep. <laughs> uh, Baldrick, I'll be back as soon as I can. Papa. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't excite him. Fat chance. <laughs> now, all we have to do is wait. Baldrick, fix us some coffee, will you? And try to make it taste slightly less like mud this time. Not easy, I'm afraid, Captain. Why is this? Because it is mud. <laughs> we ran out of coffee 13 months ago. So every time I've drunk your coffee since, I have, in fact, been drinking hot mud. <laughs> With sugar. <laughs> Which, of course, makes all the difference. Well, it would do if we had any sugar, but unfortunately, we ran out New Year's Eve 1915. Since when, I've been using sugar substitute. Which is? Dandruff. <laughs> Brilliant. Still, I could add some milk this time. Well... Saliva? No. <laughs> no, thank you, Baldrick. Call me Mr. Picky, but I think I'll cancel it. <laughs> That's probably because you're mad, sir. <laughs> well, quite. <laughs> well, I didn't go down at all well, I'm afraid, sir. Captain Darling said they'd be along directly, but, well, you better be pretty damn doolally. Don't worry, George, I am. OK, OK. <laughs> when they get here, I'll show them what totally and utterly bonkaroonie means. Wow. <laughs> Well, then, we've got bugger all to do except sit and wait. Well, I don't know, sir. We could, uh, 
We can have a jolly game of charades. Oh, yes. And uh, sing along of music hall hits like Birmingham Bertie and uh, <laughs> Whoops, Mrs. Miggins, you're setting on my artichokes. <laughs> yes, I think bugger all might be rather more fun. <laughs> Permission to ask a question, sir? Permission granted, Baldrick, as long as it isn't the one about where babies come from. <laughs> no, the thing is, the way I see it, these days there's a war on, right? And ages ago there wasn't a war on, right? So there must have been a moment when they're not being a war on went away, right? And there being a war on came along. So what I want to know is <laughs> how did we get from the one case of affairs to the other case of affairs? Do you mean, how did the war start? <laughs> yeah. The war started because of the vile Hun and his villainous empire building. George, the British Empire at present covers a quarter of the globe, while the German Empire consists of a small sausage factory in Tanganyika. <laughs> I hardly think that we can be entirely absolved from blame on the imperialistic front. Uh, oh, no. No, sir. Absolutely not. Man, a bicycle. <laughs> I heard that it started when a bloke called Archie Duke shot an ostrich because he was hungry. 